Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that may link with a January transfer and move to Arsenal. Now, on yesterday's show, I was talking about this whole Denis Suarez thing. Will it happen? Won't it happen? And I said the interesting thing was going to be what would Unai Emery's response be to it when he'd be asked a question at his press conference um, ahead of the game against West Ham on Saturday. And I don't know if you was like me yesterday, but I was really, really disappointed with what I heard from Unai Emery. And I'm not blaming Unai Emery. First of all, I want to say this. I'm not blaming Unai Emery for what he said, but I'm just upset because of what I'm seeing is almost like a, almost like a demise of Arsenal Football Club right now is when it comes to behaving like a big club. Now, Unai Emery was asked about the whole Denis Suarez situation. Um, obviously, we've been linked very heavily to him. Is this deal going to happen? And Unai Emery said at his press conference, and I quote, I don't know his situation, but we can only sign on a loan. We cannot sign permanently. We can only sign loan players. That's what Unai Emery said. So basically, Unai Emery is saying that my hands are tied. I've got no money to spend in January. All I can do is get players on loan. And we know the situation with Denis Suarez, and we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, Barcelona want a fee for him. That you know, If they got a fee for him, he'd be an Arsenal player already. But Arsenal are saying, listen, all we can afford is a loan. Now, I'm like, I'm looking at this whole situation and I'm just like, I can't believe what's going on at this football club. Now, reading and listening to people, they're saying, well, you know, there's no money because, you know, Arsenal spent big last year. Um, in January, they bought a Bamiyang. I've got the figures there, 56 million pounds. That was a big outlay, right? Um, and then in the summer, they spent £70 million on players. Lucas Torreira, uh, Matteo Guendouzi, Socrates and Bert Leno. Also got Lichtsteiner in on a free. <laughs> we like frees, right? Um, so we spent big last year. Is it? Is that big? This is Arsenal Football Club we're talking about, yeah? Arsenal. Not Fulham, who incidentally spent about the same amount of money if you, well, you know what, in the summer they spent way more than us. It's not Burnley, it's not Leicester, it's not a mid-table um, football club. This is Arsenal Football Club. This is a, a club that I saw the other day, most valuable clubs in the world. They had a thing that come out this week. I think Arsenal was fifth, fifth or sixth. We've gone down slightly. Fifth or six, more valuable than Liverpool, according to this survey, right? The only clubs above us was like, I think it was uh, obviously the officers ones, Manchester United were first, then Real Madrid, Barcelona, if I remember rightly, Bayern Munich, Juventus, Man City, then Arsenal, yeah? We've got no money to spend. All we've got is loans. That's all we can do is loan a player. Now, Stan Kroenke, the owner of this club, I mean, I'm sorry. Now is the time when you need to start stepping up. And you need to start answering to the fans what is going on at this club. I mean, you've been in charge of this club for a very long time. You've owned this club for a very long time. And I've got to say, the transfers have been mismanaged. I mean, last year, one of the reasons why we're not able to, according to the, the stats and all that, buy players is we're trying to have this sustainable model <clears throat> and to have a sustainable model, obviously, you don't want to spend more than what you get in. <laughs> Last year, what did we get in? We sold Lucas Perez in the summer for £4 million. That was a massive loss on what we bought him for. And we allowed Jack Wilshire to leave on a free. So we got absolutely no money for an England international, well-known England player. Right, I know he's injured now, but he left for absolutely nothing. As I said yesterday, Dominic Solanke left from Liverpool to Bournemouth, this transfer window for £19 million. We had Jack Wilshire, he left for absolutely zilch, nothing. Over the years, spoken about it a lot of times on this show, how many players of contracts have run down, they're leaving for nothing. Right now, Aaron Ramsey leaving for nothing. At the moment, he's juggling which clubs he's going to go to, but we're not going to get any money for Aaron Ramsey, right? The manager's been forced 
to decide whether he keeps Ramsey or he loses Ramsey so that he can free up some more wages so in the summer he can go out there and start getting in players that he'd really like. But he likes Ramsey and he'd like to be able to keep Ramsey and go and get other players to play and so he can build a great squad. But he can't do that because there's no money there so he's having to get rid of um, Aaron Ramsey. Somebody needs to tell Stan Kroenke, right? He's fought for a very long time to own all of his club. I want to know what for. Somebody needs to tell him, this is a big club. This is not a mid-table club. No disrespect to Leicester and those type of clubs. But this is not Leicester. This is not Fulham. You know, this is not Wolves. All these clubs that seem to be operating like bigger than us right now. This is Arsenal Football Club. There's 60 odd thousand fans there every single week. We've got a worldwide fan base that is unbelievable. Take it from me, Stan. I've been to all the pre-seasons over the last five years. It's unbelievable the support that we have all over the world. You've got to spend some money. It can't be just this sustainable thing. And what do you want your manager to achieve? You said at AGM, one time that you, you're not just about money, you want to win things. So you've got a team that finished sixth last year and you're hardly giving the manager any money to spend whatsoever to buy quality players. And we know what, when, what happens when you buy quality players because look what with Aubameyang. You bought a quality player who scores goals and that's exactly what he's doing now. He's coming and he's scoring goals, yeah? Right? This is a big football club. So you need to give... The manager, if you want him to get into, we're not even talking about winning the league yet, do you want him to do stage one and get back into the elite European competition, which is the Champions League, you need to give him some money so that he can bring in the players, so that he can get into those top four places. Right now, the team is struggling. I mean, <clears throat> if, let's see this scenario. So this is a phone call went through from Unai Emery to Stan Kroenke, and he said, yo, Stan, listen, right now we're struggling. We've got so many injuries to defenders. And even the defenders I've got, I'm not too sure about them if they're good enough, right? We could do with bringing in a really good centre-back and strengthening in the defensive areas. Can you, can you give me some money, please, so that I can go out there and get some in January? And what's Stan Kroenke's reply? Um, and this is a guy who's worth £70 billion, pounds, by the way. Uh, you know what? Right now I haven't got any money. You know, go around Europe and ask some of the clubs if they'll lend you a player. But I haven't got... <laughs> I, I can't believe what's going on. This is Arsenal. I can't believe what's going on. And as I said, the mismanagement of transfers that has gone on over the years has been absolutely unbelievable. Do you, do you know what's the... Um, when we talk about valuations of players and that, right? Do you know the player that Arsenal sold? for the most amount of money. I'll get you a little quiz right now, right? Whilst I just uh, get the exact uh, details of it up on my laptop here, right? I'll give you a little quiz. What player, right, has Arsenal so sold for... The, the, the player that went for the most money ever. I've even forgot my password now, right? I'm so angry, right? Which player is that? The player that we've sold over the years for the most money. Record selling player. All right, I'm going to tell you before you Google it, right? It's Mark Overmars. In 2001, we sold him to Barcelona for 40 million. This is in euros. 40 million euros. Second, Oxlade Chamberlain, who we sold to Liverpool in 2017-18 for 38 million euros. And the other day we heard how he had this clause in his contract that every time he played for Arsenal in the last season of his um, his contract, we had to be paying Southampton 10 grand or something like that. And that's why we wanted to get him off the books. And then after that, it's a Nelka 35 million euros. And then it goes to Sanchez. And it, so we've, you can see there, you know, we've hardly so, sold any, you know, we always let players' contracts run down. We've never, that was in 2001, we sold Mark Overmars to Barcelona. That's still our most record player that we sold. So how are you going to do a sustainable model when we ain't even got nothing to sell of any value? It don't work. So the owner of the football club has to put money in. You've taken on the responsibility of a mega club in Arsenal. You have to accept the fact 
that you're going to have to spend money with this club. If you're not prepared to spend money, Stan, you need to leave and give it to somebody else to run. I know that's not going to happen because now he owns all of it. But listen, now the protection and uh, the screen of Arsene Wenger is gone. Now we see where the big problem lies if you're not going to spend money. And you know what? Maybe you're not going to get the proper scrutiny now in January, but come this summer, if you do not give the right amount of funds to the manager to rebuild this team so that this team is challenging to win the league, which is what we used to do every year before we came to the Emirates Stadium, then you need to leave and give it to somebody else who understands the responsibilities of running an elite football club. Because right now, this club is not being run like an elite football club. And I feel sorry for Unai Emery and all the recruitment guys and stuff like that because basically they're being asked to work miracles. Unai, go out there and get us into the top four, but I'm not going to give you no proper money to get you into the top four. I know you finished sixth last year, but go out there and get us into the top four. Or go out there and win the Europa League, which is really, really difficult to do. And, um, but yeah, go out there and win it. Yeah, I know these teams like Chelsea and Napoli still left in it. It's got better players, spend more money. But go out there and... What? What? Nah. I'm sorry about this rant, man. You know what I mean? I don't want to be coming on here having to... But it, honestly, I was astonished yesterday when I saw that. The Arsenal Football Club has got no money. Basically, we need to lend. Lend us a player, mate. Lend us a player, Barca. Can we, can we borrow him till the end of the season? We ain't got no money. Arsenal. <laughs> oh, man. Um, on the Denis Suarez thing, by the way, even though, even though this all do, we got no money and stuff like that, the speculation still is that this deal could happen and that it could happen and that he will be alone. <laughs> not, the, not the money that Barcelona want that it'd be alone. I mean, there's even people saying that, listen, maybe um, Unai Emery came out and said that yesterday because he's trying to put pressure on Barca. I hope it is something like that, but I don't know. But um, that looks like it could still be done. Even speculation saying that the medical could still happen on um, Sunday. But we still need defenders. We still need defenders. And talking of defenders, one of our defenders, Lauren Koscielny, is back in full training now. Good to see that, but he hasn't really looked up to it since he's come back. Well, he's been linked with a move away from Arsenal to Monaco. Thierry Henry looking like he's trying to lap up loads of our players or ex-players right now. But um, he's been linked with a move away to Monaco. Mohamed El Nenny as well. He's been linked with a move away. He's been linked um, with a move to Leicester. Now, um, <laughs> again, he's not exactly going to bring in, if, if he did go to Leicester, which we, we don't know if that's going to happen, we wouldn't exactly bring in mega money, um, Mohamed El Nenny, if we're trying to go on a sustainable model, which we'd say, all right, we take that money to then go and buy a player, because what would we get from Mohamed El Nenny? Not much, you know, but he's been linked with, uh, with a move away today. Um, we're still being linked with Eva Benega, um, this uh, publication over in Spain uh, called Estadio Deportivo. They're reporting um, that Arsenal of matched his wage demands and the Ever Benega's considering a move. Uh, you know, obviously he's played under Unai Emery before in the past. Unai Emery would love to bring him in. Um, but we're being told that that, but <laughs> Sevilla gonna want money for him, big money. He's been having a good season so far, playing really, really well, Ever Benega. Um, they're gonna want big money for him, not alone. So I can't say, is that gonna happen? And uh, finally, there's the Yannick Carrasco one that's still going around today. Despite, as I said, what Unai Emery said, there's still a lot of rumours going around. And the Yannick Carrasco one's still flying around. And uh, the team in China don't want to lose him. It would cost about £25 million. It would be a great signing. But again, if we only loan him players, they're not going to loan him to us, are they? So that looks unlikely. I really don't know. And no talk of any defenders right now and for me that is what we need so yeah that's the situation <laughs> at the moment um we go to the game against West Ham tomorrow which is an absolute must win game as I said we need miracles now we need miracles from Unai Emery we need 
players not to get injured from now till the end of the season. We need every single player to step up and play at the very, very top of their game. Because if we don't, we won't get into the top four. If we don't get into the top four, we won't get the sort of money that you get for being in the Champions League, which means we're not going to be able to shop at the highest level to bring in the best quality players and we'll be relying on more miracles and it could be years if we don't get our act together before we get back into the Champions League. Thanks for watching the show today and we'll be back tomorrow.